it's time we expose some truth. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, the rack is real and that Mitch is the guy that, you know, that took him. But he uh, he called me on Friday the 13th, November Friday 13th, at about 930 in the morning. And he said, I got him. That's exactly what he said to me. And I said, you mean the, the big buck? He said, yes. So after three days of being with him, uh, I got to see and touch, feel everything that was about and well that was chuck niece and those clips were from the illinois learn to hunt podcast if you haven't seen their channel go check it out they had a great video about mitch and the rumpola buck from back in october november of 2023 next up we're going to meet brian lee with the mitch rumpola fan page on facebook my name is brian lee head administrator for the mitch rumpola fan club on facebook uh, I've been in the seat for about almost a year and a half. Uh, when I uh, acquired it, the seat was vacated. Uh, the page was blank. My goal was to simply talk about Ron Paula. I didn't have an agenda. And since the opportunity came along, I started to do some research. The page started to grow. Um, so I had to get some help and recruited a few good guys, Craig Johnson, Justin Dehas, Mike Robinson, Michael West, and Scott Castone. Uh, the page has acquired many people uh, that know Mitch, his friends and family, uh, famous people in the hunting industry, and we have about 14,000 people here right now. We have great videos, great footage, and the facts that show Mitch Paula himself to be a very nice man, extremely knowledgeable in bow hunting whitetails, and the Paula buck we know as fact is real. Brian just mentioned some famous people on the page. Uh, just to name a few off the top of my head, Richard, Sp Richard P. Smith, who's an outdoor writer, writes for magazines and he's wrote several books as well. He's on the page, he's seen the buck, he's, he's spent a lot of time with Mitch, he knows the buck is legit. Uh, Chuck Neesh, you've already heard just a little bit more from, you'll hear from him later as well as he gets into the contract that Milo and Mitch had together with the seed company, of course. Let's jump on into this next clip, which is Greg and Mitch. Uh, Greg and his dad, Fred, they had an outdoor TV channel and uh, they sold lots of videos. They sold some different hunting gear. But here's an interview with Greg and Mitch. Congratulations, Mitch. Outstanding. Thank you. You were after that new potential world record a few years back. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, it was in uh, actually 1996 when I first seen actually both deer. Uh, I'd seen this big nine point. He was actually fighting with a, well, I thought it was a big white rack 12 point at the time. And uh, I caught him in velvet. It was late July. And they were actually up on their hind feet and using their front hooves to club the heck out of each other. Oh, man. And, uh, you know, that's when I thought, well, it's a good area. I'm going to try to hunt these deer. Well, in September, I happened to see this big wide rack one. Uh, wow, this is the biggest thing I've ever seen. And uh, right then, I thought if there was a deer to break 200 in the state of Michigan, this one had to be close. And October 1st rolled around, first day of bow season. And the nine point had come right underneath me, and I chose to let him go. October 12th rolled around. I was on a stand and I seen this big white rack buck coming into me, the real big one. And I thought, oh man, I'm going to get a crack at him. He starts kind of curving up to me and angling towards me. And then all of a sudden he started, uh, he turned real quick to take off running. And I walked the heck. I knew he hadn't scented me or anything like that. And uh, here come this big buck off this ridge and he's attacking him. And he's got his head down, looked like a bull, just right in the sight of this deer. And they're running away like this. So they finally broke off and the big nine was back up on this ridge and I could hear him up there. He is so agitated and he's just tearing the heck out of trees up there and everything else. And I thought, my gosh, of course now I'm mad because he run my other deer. Yeah. Around. And uh, I thought, well, if he comes in now, I'm going to shoot him. So uh, I could hear him up there and I didn't hear him for a few minutes and that's when I used your grunt call. I gave a couple grunts on it and I didn't hear nothing for a few minutes. And all of a sudden I could hear him walking in towards me, coming in from behind looking for me. When he come in, I ended up shooting him. He took off and we found him later that evening. He was actually a lot bigger than I thought. I thought he was like 150 class. He ended up actually being, he broke Boone and Crock at 170. Actually, that was an eight point. Yeah, true, true. And then uh, 
he had a two and a half inch sticker point coming off a back 15 inch tine, and that made him score, actually netted out at 168. Heck of a deer. <laughs> so to let a small one go like that, now you know it's not a small one, of course, but the other one just dwarfed him. I mean, it was amazing how big the other deer was. And the nine pointer ended up being the largest deer ever taken in Michigan, largest nine point ever taken in Michigan. Yeah, that's what I was told. I, I wasn't the one that looked into that, but some other people had. That's what they come up with. And the big wide one, of course, we found out this year, since I did get him, that uh, they aged him at exactly seven and a half years old. So he was an older, docile buck. He didn't prefer to fight. In fact, he didn't like to run. I mean, it was always, it almost seemed like every step he took was had some intentions to it. Did you notice how Mitch said he was not the one to look those records up? That makes me think maybe he didn't really care about those type of records. Of course, he, like me and everybody else, wants to know you can shoot the largest buck that's out there, okay? But he didn't know that he had the largest nine point in Michigan at the time until somebody else looked it up and told him. Next up, we're gonna hear from Chuck Neese again. He spent a lot of time with Mitch. He was around him for at least three days and then has met him multiple times since then. Three days that he spent going to the area where the buck was killed, going to the area, examining the rack. He had built the bow for Mitch, his company, CSS, had built the bow. They wanted to validate everything, make sure the guy they were representing was legit. So Chuck spent all that time he overheard a conversation between Mitch and Ron. Mitch and Ron were talking about a millionaire flying in from Texas. Wanted to examine the rack, x-ray the rack, and possibly purchase the rack. They were talking a seven-figure sum. Chuck wrote that in one of the magazine articles that he himself has been in. But let's hear with Chuck about what he has to say about the contract between Milo Hansen and Mitch Rampolo. You know, I would say that buck you know brought milo quite a bit of money mitch didn't want to take that away from him you know so that's where the contract was really made and i think that also lends to the authenticity because if the buck wasn't real why did you need a contract you know what i'm saying i said it uh yeah. it, it plays to me that you know mitch mitch was that kind of guy though he thought a lot of milo he didn't want the uh you know all the fame with it and uh I think some other things occurred, which we can talk about, but you know, that was the whole thing. Now I do believe in the contract is that if someone does kill a deer bigger than Milo's, you'll see the Rampola buck come up. With the I think that's part of it. Well, that'll be cool when that day happens and Boone and Crockett wants to acknowledge it. Uh, what about Johnny King's buck? The Alexander buck, which was taken this year, we don't know at this point in time. There's there's really just one person knows whether that was a legal harvest or not. I'm not here to say one way or the other, but it's becoming more and more clear to me that Boone and Crockett does not want Milo Hansen's record to be broke. Unfortunately, there's very few interviews with Mitch alone prior to harvesting the big buck. He had been taking many bucks for years. Mike Avery with Mike Avery Outdoors was lucky enough to interview him once. Here's what he has to say in that interview. A lot of guys go about it the wrong way. They're trying to find out exactly what the deer are doing, so they're trying to keep tabs on the deer visually. With whitetails, you can't do that because of the thick habitat they live in. I spend more time researching an area, scouting it, than I do hunting it. I, I probably don't spend any more time hunting an area than a lot of other people would. The only thing is, I spent so much time learning it beforehand, I'm able to go out there and put myself in the right place at the right time, more often than a lot of other hunters can. I go out there and I'm looking at, okay, how can I give myself an opportunity at a shot at this deer? And I approach it that way, so I think that's the difference. And I, don't, I try to uh, maybe put the luck factor a little more in my favor. Guys like me definitely need the luck factor. Trail, trail cameras are great but putting our feet on the ground and our eyes behind a spotting scope or a set of binoculars, getting in the woods, trying to find those deer and pattern them, Mitch was the best at. I'm like 99.9% .9 of the country. I haven't had the privilege to meet Mitch. I just wish some of this stuff wouldn't have happened so that guys could still learn from the man. We could learn more from him in a short conversation than we could learn in years of hunting ourselves. Uh, Lee Brown, or I'm sorry, Lee Holbrook, Al Brown, and Gary Berger were the guys who measured the buck. Uh, they, 
to my understanding, they came over after he had harvested the deer. And then they also came over and they measured the deer, you know, after the 60 day drying period. These were three official scores. Uh, they had not only scored deer for CBM there in Michigan, they had scored deer for Pope and Young and Boone and Crockett, the way I understand. A tribal uh, conservation officer, Bill Bailey, uh, he was around there. He put his hands on the deer as well. All these guys that I just mentioned are on the Mitch Rumpola fan page on Facebook. They still vouch for the deer to this day. Let's hear a little bit more from Chuck, and then we'll move on. Deer and deer hunting, uh, they did an article, which is some of it in, in the Facebook, but uh, they did a whole story on it and showed Lee Holbrook and all the measures. If people would have seen that magazine, there was no doubt. I mean, they showed everything that could be shown. Just as I just said, all those guys, they're on the fan page. Chuck just reiterated that. Check it out, folks. Now, a guy named Terry Conger, he worked at a butcher shop. So the way I understand the following day, Mitch was looking for somewhere to weigh this buck. So uh, it's said that the deer weighed 263 pounds, I believe. Uh, that was after the deer was field dressed. So Terry was working at a butcher shop. He was on the page. He still is on the page. And he's talking about Mitch coming in. I reached out to Terry myself, and this is what he had to say. I'll let you read it for yourself. Exactly. Now that's another guy who had no idea who Mitch was, but he was in pure amazement of the deer. Mitch didn't let him take any pictures of it. He knew he had something special. He was just looking for somewhere to weigh the deer. Richard P. Smith is the outdoor rider who's had the privilege of meeting Mitch several times. They went over the hunting stories. He's seen the deer. He'll vouch for everything. Richard has several articles that he's written throughout the years and even some just in the past few years, maybe in the past six months to a year for that matter. But if you'll go to the Mitch Rumpola fan page on Facebook, you'll be able to look at those articles in the featured section. Uh, just one more guy who's been in the whitetail world for a long time, in the outdoor world for a long time. He's a deer hunter, he's a bear hunter, he's an outdoorsman, he knows what a real rack is, he knows what a real, real deer is. When you're on that Rompola fan page, I'm one of the admins, moderators. We're trying to limit the amount of childishness that happens at times, okay? We're not gonna let you come on there and cuss one another out through the comments. Uh, we're pro Rompola, pro in favor of the deer, okay? If, if you don't wanna be a part of that, then don't go look at the page. I read through several of the comments. There's, there's two ladies that I've seen on there off and on. One of the ladies is named Holly. She tells me that her and her husband met Mitch. They didn't know what type of a hunter Mitch was. They didn't even realize about the big buck at that time. But throughout the years, Mitch continued, it was almost like a pen pal. He continued to send them letters. He continued to send them pictures of deer he harvested after the giant. Uh, I think that just shows that Mitch, and like Holly said, she had never shot a deer before. But as she shot one, she sent Mitch a picture of it, and this is what he sent back to her. To me, that shows Mitch was a guy who was willing to help people. He just didn't want to be out in the public eye as much as we all wanted him to be. Another lady on there, I think her name was Cynthia, but I might be saying it wrong. I'm fixing to put it up on the screen. As you can read there, her mother dated Mitch for 19 years. I don't know why this lady would come on the page and lie about anything, so I'm taking it for the truth. As you can see, she says Mitch filmed many of these deer since they were babies before he harvested them. Every deer he shot was real. Just one more person. and. This is just be from, from what I've known in my almost 46 years on earth, almost a stepdad tour. They was together 19 years. A lot of times those type of people don't have something good to say somebody 
to say about somebody after they've split their ways. This lady, still to this day, vouches for Mitch. Let's take a look at the newest video, which surfaced on the Mitch Rumpola fan page just a couple days ago, courtesy of Denny Gurick. It's about six minutes long. It's him talking to Mitch, and it's got the full recovery of the deer. Best quality I've ever seen. So, enjoy. Now we've got Mitch Rampola from Traverse City, who arrowed what could be the state record buck. Now, the one you see right here is not the state record. This is one I think you shot in Missouri, right? Yes. Yes, back in uh, 1962. Now, this is also a beautiful buck, and this is one of the first ones I think you entered into the record book? Uh, yes, I was 14 when I shot this deer. Oh, God, what a beautiful deer. Yeah. Now, Mitch, however, has taken a much bigger buck. You can see the picture of it right now on film up here in Traverse City on November 13. Now, Mitch knows a little bit about uh, record book bucks. Not only has he taken this one in Missouri, I think you've got 21 altogether, but he was also a scorer for Pope and Young and Boone and Crockett, and he knows what a big buck looks like. And you have a pretty good feeling about this one, don't you? Oh, sure I do. Even when I seen him out in the wild, I figured he could be the one to break 200. And now that we've green scored him, it's very possible he's going to do a lot better than that. Yeah. Now, how can you sleep at night? I mean, I was so excited coming up here to see the picture and the film. At uh, you know, I, I was really excited in the car. I don't know how you can sleep at night knowing you've got this big buck sitting there waiting to dry out and waiting to get scored. Well, actually, if you look at my eyes right now, it's been <laughs> not getting a lot of sleep. My phone's been just ringing off the hook. Uh, uh, Wednesday, I had over 120 calls. Oh. Yesterday, around 90 some we logged, oh. and it's been very busy. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how fast the word travels? Actually, I shot the deer last Friday, and by Tuesday, I had, I think, almost every major magazine in the nation had called me by then. Now, as you can see by the uh, picture we showed you all ago, it is a huge buck, and we've also got some film of you recovering, an actual recovery of the buck taken that day. Uh, yeah, well, they used part of that in that tape. I, uh, the recovery tape I do have uh, is from the tree stand to the deer. I never shut the camera off. It's the entire recovery, and it's very exciting to watch. Okay. I knew he was big. Look how white he is. Oh, good sized deer, too. Holy criminy. Yeah, yeah, that's about the angle. Oh, oh man. Oh, shit. Oh, is he beautiful. Man, it's got to be, you know, the spread's over three feet, I'll bet you. I got a tape measure back at the truck. I don't know what he's been rubbing. Something. Now, uh, well, I'm thinking of seeing a big buck come in front of my stand. I've never seen anything even like this. And I'm thinking how nervous I would probably get. How could you even pull the bull back? Well, I ask myself that. I can tell you. I mean, uh, it's been a lot of years. I've shot a lot of big bucks, and I grew up hunting big bucks and seeing nice racks. And I think that was the edge I had on the buck fever part of it. Uh, but this one gave it to me, I can tell you. I shook. I was shaking when I seen him. And, and of course, missing him about a week beforehand, I wasn't going to miss him this time. I, I really focused, and I, I didn't take any chancy shots. As I just center shot this thing and made it good. And But, yeah, I, in fact, I couldn't get out of the stand for 15 minutes. I had to sit down, you know, regain my composure, and once I did get down, I didn't go look. I didn't help you. You know, I was, uh, my wife and I were talking about this on the way down, and I was trying to compare this to, like, the Super Bowl or the NBA title, and I got to thinking, it's really bigger than that because somebody wins that every year. Uh, this is, this will be, now I keep pointing at this one, the buck that you got will be only the third world record ever taken, actually, because uh, James Jordan did it in, uh, I believe, 1914 out of Burnett County, Wisconsin, 206 and 18, I believe. And this thing stood for 80 years. That I mean, people thought this record will never be broken. There's too many hunters out there, and not as many uh, big deer can grow to be the age. i got to get that rack that size. And then along comes Milo Hansen in 1995 and gets this big guy in Saskatchewan, and he not only breaks the record, he shatters it. I mean, there's a lot of people got close to Jordan. I mean, like 204, 205, couldn't quite get it. 
three, four years, three years later, uh, you told me that your buck is so much bigger than the Hanson's rack that the Hanson rack will actually fit inside your rack and rattle around. Yeah, you can move it back and forth in yeah. there. I mean, it's it's extremely wide. I mean, yeah. you, the outside spread on it's 38 inches, which wow. that alone is the widest one ever in the world. Yeah. The widest outside spread is on, I think, a buck from Kentucky. It's 34 and a half inches. Okay, and I and think... that was the widest outside spread on a typical. Right, and I think Hanson's was like 34. 29. Oh, 29. 29 okay. outside. Okay. So he had a 27 inside spread. Wow. And it's tremendous. That's a tremendous yeah. deer. And of course, you know... I just figured this one would probably break the 200 mark, and of course, after we checked him out a little closer, I started really getting scared. Oh, I thought, my, my gosh, I just—I yeah. never believed this deer would do that. But he's got the 14-inch tines. I think there's three of them on there. Even the other one's about 13, and long main beams. Everything he needs: big, wide, 30 wow. and a half inch inside spread, and, and perfect typical. Not yeah, he deductions. Didn't, he's hardly got any deductions. Wow. It's very clean. It's a—it's a very clean rack too. There's mm -hmm. no odd points on it, no yeah. non-typical, yeah. very easy to score, so yeah. there's no complications wow. with this one. Well, Mitch, I'd like to congratulate you again on the big buck that you took. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy, and I'm proud for you, and I'm proud for Michigan, and uh, I imagine this is going to generate a lot of interest here in northern Michigan now. Well, I would sure think it would, and I hope to help that. I'm going to, once it's officially measured and mounted and all that and all that's said and done, I do hope to take it out, and I want to show it to the people of Michigan. I think it's it's even good for the state that uh, they've got a deer like this. I mean, for a deer to even break 200 is phenomenal, and we'll see where this one ends up. But I want to, you know, do the hunters justice to and show everybody. Now, you've got it under lock and key right now. Uh, we've got 60 days. Well, you've got less than that. Now, you probably know the days and the minutes when you can haul this thing back out and get it officially scored. But you're going to keep it under lock and key until that time and then take it out and uh, get it scored and see where it falls. Yeah. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, you know, you got to protect it, of course. Uh, somebody's uh, putting quite a value on it. I've had some antler collectors call and offer me uh, some pretty good money for it. And right now, we just want to keep it safe and nobody's handling it until it gets officially measured. We don't want it getting broken, of course. Yeah. <laughs> if you can watch that recovery deer and still tell me that it's a fake and that Mitch is a fraud. I think you're a special kind of you know what. It's hard to keep your head that stuck in the mud. Okay, the other videos that I had seen was by Mike Avery Outdoors, and I'm grateful that we were able to see it as well, but the quality wasn't as good. And it was just a little bit sketchy, a little, you know, I, this Denny, Dennis come out with this video just a few days ago on Facebook. It is absolutely outstanding. And I couldn't be any more thankful to see that. So in closing here, I wanna show you a couple side-by-side -side pictures. You probably already seen many of the pictures that I've shown in here today, but Mitch shot an eight point about three weeks after, I think it was December the 8th or 9th of 1998. There's been some wildlife picture biologists who've claimed this eight point is the same buck as the real big giant Rompola buck. They claim Mitch shot the eight point and then augmented the antlers, come out with the, the big 216 inch buck. Uh, there's one thing they might have missed in those pictures. Although these antlers do both have a wide set, uh, I don't think the eight point is near as wide, but, but anyways, I don't, I don't know the logistics on it. I've heard that it scores around 135 inches. But if you look at the left shoulder area of the eight point, it's, it might be a scar, but it's definitely scuffed up. Uh, it's not a broadhead entry, but regardless, it's not there on the big buck. So despite the fact that they both got wide antlers, uh, they're not the same bucks. Come on, people. As always, thanks for watching. If you yourself have seen the buck in person, if you know Mitch, I'd love to see it in the comments. If you haven't checked out the Rumpola fan page on Facebook, please do so. As for myself, I'm gonna lean, I'm gonna lean heavily on knowing and believing the buck is real. I hope one day someone tops the Milo Hansen buck. Maybe Kevin, Mitch's son, will bring the buck out. Maybe he'll have it officially scored put it in the record books too. But as of right now, Mitch can't do it because of his contract with Milo Hansen. Thanks for watching what should be the world record book. I hope you enjoyed.